Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome Good morning today to talk about our lead service line replacement program. My name is Jim Muller. I'm the executive director for the Passaic Valley Water Commission, and I'm happy to be joined today by Mayor Grabowski from Clifton, Mayor Saya from Patterson, and Commissioner Cotton from the Passaic Valley Water Commission. And Mayor Laura from Passaic is planning to join us in a, in a little bit. So lead service line replacements. Lead in drinking water can cause serious harm to children and adults, especially young children and pregnant women. Since 1984, I'm proud to say PBWC has replaced more than 26,000 PBWC-owned lead lines. And now we are focused on, or we're in the middle of, replacement of customer-owned lead service lines from the house to the curb. We're proud to be doing that. And we have a $36 million uh, construction program that we launched in the summer of 2022 uh, to remove those customer-owned lead service lines. The good news is it's free to customers. They do ha not have to pay the residents that need their lines replaced. They do not have to pay. And the state, New Jersey DEP and the Water Bank, have subsidized our $36 million program by allowing us principal forgiveness where we do not have to pay $27 million back. So it's an incredible gain. It's free to the residents who need their lines replaced, and it's also heavily subsidized by the state, which helps our ratepayers get this important public health initiative accomplished. So to date, since 2022, we've replaced almost 4,000 customer-owned lead service lines. Mm -hmm. And there's about 2,000 lines remaining to, re to be replaced. Uh, one of the reasons why we're here today is we really need customers or residences to allow us access to their basements, to their inside their house, to their water meter, and their lead line to allow us to accomplish that replacement. Uh, so again, free to the customers. We are not there looking at code violations. We're not there to look at anything except what material is in that line. And if it's lead, we want to replace it as expeditiously as possible and restore the property to its prior condition. Um, so this free and federally mandated initiative cannot succeed without customer support. And we have the support of all the cities here today, which is wonderful. Uh, our staff are working hard on that, our contractor Pacific Construction, and our consultant CDM Smith, who's helping us construct, uh, manage the construction, all aimed at really removing these lines for free for our customers. So with that said, uh, I'll, I'm happy to turn it over to Mayor, uh, Mayor Grabowski, yes. I apologize, from Clifton to say a few remarks. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We like the opportunity that the St. Valley Water Commission is giving us today to have this information uh, put out publicly. First thing you have to realize is that this is an appeal for the residents, mostly of Clifton, of course everyone, but for me, Clifton, to allow us to get into your house when you get a notification that we're going to come in and change the lead lines. Now this is a state-mandated program that has to be done, but more importantly than anything else, lead lead is not a good thing there's no safe lead levels so we have to eliminate lead completely in the system which safe valley's been doing a great job but right now we're getting to the point where we still have customers that aren't allowing us into the houses so i'm here to make that appeal if you get this notice please please let them in or if you're unsure of who's at your door please contact safe valley Water, and, and they'll let you know that that's what we have to do but we have to do this because it's very important because lead lead causes a lot of problems especially with young children and if we can eliminate lead we will eliminate a lot of problems down the road and i also want to say that um, besides it being important that to get the lead out it's mandated we have to do this so for the residents of clifton if you do not allow us in now first of all this is completely free 100 percent free doesn't cost you anything, they come in and they fix it. If you don't allow it in and you go to sell your house down the road, you're going to be responsible to have this done before you can sell your house, which can be upwards of 10000 possibly even more to have this done. So I don't understand why you wouldn't do this. There's no reason not to let someone in. But more importantly, it's a health issue. So please, please, when someone comes, you get a notice, allow them in, because right now this has to be done. Uh, I, I appreciate everybody's cooperation. And now I'd like to turn it over to the Mayor Patterson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Grabowski, for hosting us here in Clifton. I actually parked at City Hall and walked here. It took me about 20 minutes. So <laughs> I but I got like 10,000 
often steps on my Fitbit as a result. And I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge the leadership of our executive director for State County Water Commission, Jim Muller. Just because I admire him so much, today I wore a New York Mets tie, and he happens to be a New York Yankees fan. Just wanted to remind him that better days might be ahead for his team that just got swept by the amazings. But nevertheless, I want to dovetail on what Mayor Grabowski was saying. You have to trust us. Public office is a public trust. When we are saying that this is a relatively painless process, and that it won't cost you anything because if you did it on your own, it'd be about $10,000. So we're not only saving money, we could be saving lives. Think about the consequences of being exposed to lead contamination. Brain damage can ensue as a result. And I'm encouraged at the data that we have already that there have been 1,665 lead lines replaced already. But I'm a little discouraged by the fact that 539 people have not let us in their homes. So that's why we're making this pitch. That's why we're making this plea. And it's actually a humanitarian plea because it shows the Passaic County Water Commission, Clifton, Patterson, Passaic, we care. We actually have a commissioner with us today to also emphasize the fact that it's free and it is definitely in your best interest to just let us in and replace those lead lines. If you do not believe me or anyone else who's spoken already, think about Flint, Michigan. We've all learned from the horror stories that we heard that happened there, and it can't, can't happen here. So almost fittingly, we've just been joined by the charismatic, <laughs> dynamic mayor of the city of Passaic, the Honorable Hector Carlos Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, right Mets do well. Yes. <laughs> Always celebrating the Mets. Uh, good morning, everyone. Obviously, I am uh, enthusiastically supportive of the Pacific Valley Border Commission's initiative and approach to remove these lead lines. I echo the sentiments of Mayor Sayer and obviously Mayor Grabowski, thank you for hosting us in your city, sir, and always being so welcoming to all. And I believe that the information that has been shared regarding our city is 74% of the lead lines in Pasig have been removed, which I believe it's about 791 lines. So I think we have over 270 more lines to go, if uh, math still serves me well in this uh, role, and I think it does. I heard Mayor Sayer explain the importance of uh, removing these lead lines. Obviously the negative impact. I think there's a consensus, we all agree, that no amount of lead is acceptable, especially when it comes to our children and our families. I am so deeply appreciative of our state legislators who have worked so hard to ensure that funding can come to our municipalities through the Pacific Valley Water Commission as well as the federal government. We have a responsibility and a duty to act on behalf of those who perhaps aren't always heard, those who are most vulnerable, often referred to as the most marginalized in our communities. Without the information, without the education, without communication, or an approach to ensure that everyone understands the adverse impact and effects, especially on development of young children of lead in our lines, then they may go and drink the water or be involved in activities exposed to this water and not think anything of it. But we know better. So again, I'll reiterate, we have a responsibility, a duty. Is there an inconvenience? Yes, we cannot pretend there won't be an inconvenience. Sidewalks are being opened up. Streets are being blocked off. I can imagine the Mayor Sayer, Mayor Grabowski, gets, they get the same calls I get. When is this work gonna be done? But when you consider that if a resident had to do this on their own, it cost them about $10,000, but this service is being provided for free, for free. And if I may, to all the communities out there, we need your support and your collaboration. This is a collective effort to try to ensure that we responsibly address this concern. The funding is there. The willingness is there from the Passaic Valley Water Commission. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Director Moon. Thank you to all the commissioners for acting and working so hard. Thank you, Commissioner, obviously, for your work and your colleagues. The revenue is there, the funding. The willingness is there. What we need is your cooperation. We need you to open up the doors. 
We need you to respond to the calls, to respond to the email correspondence. And if I may, pueblo, comunidad, estoy hablando con su alcalde de Tulum. Es tan importante remover estas líneas de plomo. Los efectos negativos lo tenemos que mover para asegurar que el desarrollamiento de nuestros niños, de la comunidad, de esos que son más vulnerables, eh, tienen la oportunidad de tener agua limpia. Yo me uno con el alcalde de Paris, el gran alcalde André Sayer, el alcalde de Clifton, Magrabowski, los comisionados de la agencia de agua en el condado. Los fondos están ahí. La disponibilidad, el deseo para hacer el arreglo está ahí. Pero lo que necesitamos es su cooperación. Abren las puertas. Ayúdame. En Pase removimos más del 74% de las líneas de plomo, más de 791 líneas. Lo quedan como 277. Necesitamos terminar ese trabajo. Le doy la gracia a los oficiales en el Estado, en el condado, en el gobierno federal proveer los fondos necesarios para hacer este trabajo. Pero si vamos a asegurar un mejor futuro para nuestros jóvenes, necesitamos trabajar juntos, necesitamos su, problema, su colaboración. Ayúdanos a hacer este trabajo. Only together will we make the difference. Only cooperating with one another. So please help us so that we can move forward, lifting all our communities up together. So when it comes to Clifton, Patterson, Passaic, areas of Prospect Park, we need all of your cooperation, and we can get this job done and move on to bigger and better projects that continue to improve the quality of life for all of our residents. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. Okay. Actually, I was going to say, I'm Andre saying I proved that message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to dovetail on what. Mayor Laura was saying, as far as a collective effort, we formed the United Front, and this is a partnership with the State Power Work Commission. It's a humanitarian effort as well. And I've said it in the past, they, they call him Hector C. Laura, the C is because he cares. We care, all of us care. And that's why we're here, and we're here with someone who's got C in her name too. A history maker in her own right, first African-American woman to serve as the mayor of Patterson, and our four-term city councilwoman from the fourth ward, Ruby N. Cotton. Thank you. Commissioner. You know, when I read the email to my director, your mother, to Mayor Hector Laura, um, that they were having problems with getting into some of the homes. And what I find here in my city of Paris is sometimes they're very reluctant of many people. Yeah. And, and what I find that I have done many times before, I have different projects, and they didn't think that it was legitimate. And then sometimes they need to see the face. And I would go there and say, no, this is for real. We are coming in here, we're doing it for free. You do not have to pay anything. So I want to plead to you out there that this is so important. We have put laws in place before the lead line replacement. You know, not letting an apartment to six years and under kids with lead in apartments. So we are now saying you do not have to pay anything to get this done. And I want to say to you all out here, you see our faces, Mayor Hector Laura, Mayor Andre Sayer, Mayor Gabowski from Clifton, you know our faces. We're standing here legit. And when I saw the email, I went over to my director and said, I wanted to be a part of this press conference because everyone in Patterson knows who we're in. And our sister city, we can say, and we're going to be sister city. So. <laughs> but I just want to say that when people see a face, they say, yes, this is really for real. This is legit. So we're asking you, we're not here to be a spy. We're not here to tell on you. We're not here to tell you when. We want to get in there and replace them red lines because it needs to be replaced. So please, if you're very skeptical, just call say no, just call one of the mayors, call myself, Commissioner Cotton, to say, oh, are they really doing this? And sometimes I find um, everyone that it depends on what they look like who's knocking on the door. Because sometimes I find that if, if they can't, if they're not what their they can't relate is, to them. They can't understand, but I want everyone out here to know that we are here. This is free. We need to get in. If you have any questions, all of our lines are open. All our phone lines are open to ask questions if you do not believe. So I'm pleading out there with you, community. Please, please, we must get this done. The state of New Jersey has helped us, and I am so grateful to the state of New Jersey. 
will help us to even get this done. So everyone out there, please, let us in. We are here, it's be free. Don't wait until you can't do it no more, until you sell your home and you cannot sell it because the leg line has to be replaced. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all. You will not be taking questions about the New York Yankees. <laughs> so just to conclude, if, if people aren't sure whether they have lead or want to coordinate with us on the replacement of their line, they can go to pbwc.com and they can actually look up their address. We have a lookup tool. They can put their address in and then it'll tell them right away whether they have lead or not. And if they do, they can contact us at 973-340-4300 and our customer service line. And we will take that information and we will coordinate directly with that customer. Please reach out to us. Uh, we have staff in the field. Uh, like I said, CDM Smith, Pacific Construction, we are in the field. Uh, people are going, they're knocking on doors, they're leaving cars. So please, if you see that, call us at those numbers. So again, pbwc.com, you can look up your address. You can see whether you have lead or not. 973-340-4300, you can call us directly and we'll assist. So thank you all. Thank you. Just want to turn it over if there's any questions. Uh, happy to Nick Calloway. facilitate. An anonymous source told me to ask about the Subway series. I mean, from 2000? Oh! <laughs> it's just 4-1, right? Uh, it's quick pivot, Jim. That was a quick pivot. Federally mandated and state funded, is that right? Correct. Okay. And I guess may maybe one of the mayors, or, or you can discuss the. Uh, state? I'm sorry. Correct. The question was on funding, correct? So oh, yeah. it was. This is. <laughs> I get it. Okay, Governor so Murphy made the law. Yeah. So in 2021, there was a law passed that mandates lead service lines be removed by 2031. We're well in advance of that. That's good. So we're, we're going to be six or seven years ahead. In terms of funding, federal funding is available and it's appropriated through the state. The New Jersey DEP has worked with the iBank at the state level to give us a $36 million loan. And we don't have to pay back $27 million, which is a wonderful uh, benefit you know, from the state. What's the timeline like for if you don't get this done and then you say you go to sell your house in the future? What's that like next summer, next spring? Next right, so we plan, we're plan. we planning to be completed with this contract by the spring of 25. Mm -hmm. So that's about six, nine months away. So time is starting to run out. Each town, each city passed ordinances as well where, uh, and we don't want to do this, but where there could actually be a fine imposed by the, by the city. Again, not something we want to do. We actually just want to move the lead line. But those mechanisms are in place. We're here today to try to avoid all that and just get those lines out proactively. We're going to have to move to that. Or as Mayor Grabowski said, then if, if, if all of that doesn't happen and you go to sell, then it's on you to fix it at $10,000 or more. Um, so, so really, the time is now. And in, in the next six to nine months, we're planning to, to wrap up our contract. Jim, if I may, you know, please. I just want to add, it, it's extremely important to understand that the timeline, and obviously, some of the municipalities involved considering the potential of fines, it's because the funding is available. We have made more than a compelling argument as to why you should cooperate. The willingness is there, we'll work with you, and this is a public health concern. So you have an obligation as a property owner. It's also beneficial to you because if you don't meet this timeline, it's over $10,000 you're gonna have to pay. It can impede the selling, of your property, you don't want to find out afterwards when the timeline has run out. And you know, Commissioner Cotton said something that was so important. There is some objection, some pushback, some concern, especially for residents in communities like mine when they wonder, what if the individual comes in and says, this in the basement shouldn't have been constructed this way? Or maybe there are a lot of people in here and they're going to report it. We must assure you that is not the goal of the individuals coming in. Obviously, as mayor, I, I would ask that everyone do everything according to the law and appropriate ordinances, we're all in agreement. But that is not the priority of individuals knocking on your door from the Pacific Valley Water Commission. We have volunteers from within the community to the Commission of Kind's point so that you can relate to individuals. We have individuals that speak different languages, but do not be concerned with whether or not there'll be some kind of consequence or some issue with some structural or some work that you're doing. This is about removing the lead lines saving you money, ensuring the health of your families and all the families of our areas and our communities. Por favor, a las familias que tienen preocupaciones, que piensan que si alguien entra va a decir, oh, están construyendo aquí, o quizá van a identificar algo y lo van a reportar, eso no es la prioridad. Obviamente, como alcalde, deseo que todo haga las cosas acuerdo a la ley, 
pero la prioridad de estos individuos asegura que se puede remover las líneas de plomo. Ellos no van a reportar ningún otro asunto, ellos no importan, lo que le importa es remover esas líneas, asegurar la salud del pueblo y ayudarte, porque si tú no lo remueves y tratas de vender tu casa, te van a parar el proceso, te va a costar a ti más de 10 mil dólares para removerlo tú mismo, y si no lo remueves antes del 2025, te van a dar una multa. Por favor, lo deseamos ayudar. Ayúdanos nosotros, ayudarlo a ustedes. Help us, help you. It's extremely important. Thank you. Well said. If I may, director, I just want to remind everyone too that um, people sometimes think that it has to be the owner of the property to let you in. It does not have to be the owner of the property. The tenant can let you in, the renter can let you in. So you do not have to get permission from the owner. The tenant can let you come in or the renter can let you come in to do this and it's so very important. So don't think that they gotta get permission from the homeowner. The tenant can let you in into the basement where you need to go. I just want to remind everyone of that. Thank you. So just open it up to questions. If there's any other questions, that was good. Um, and if not, that concludes our press conference today. Thanks Thank all you. for coming. Thanks. Get the light out. Thank you. Thank you.